Welcome to Around the Peninsula. I'm Airman First Class Devin Notstein. Soldiers at Camp Humphreys are playing Find the Helicopter. Senior Airman Robert Mason reports. Becoming isolated during a mission is a troubling scenario many soldiers may someday have to face. Today at Camp Humphreys, personnel recovery training finds these soldiers stranded as a result of a convoy accident. What this allowed us to do is to provide people who have never been introduced to the personnel recovery architecture uh, the actual means that they would expect to see once they were an isolated personnel, either through an aircraft incident or even a ground convoy or ground patrol, once they had become isolated, it showed them the steps that they would proceed and the communications that they would utilize along the architecture to facilitate their own recovery. Survival skills like these are essential to soldiers like Private Kamani Robinson. It's more of reassurance and uh, trusting the Army in general that they have my back and they're going to do everything they can and then it's relying on your equipment. It's, we went through a lot of equipment and a lot of tools today and I know how to use them better and I know how to use them by myself and with a group of people. So if I ever do need them in the worst case scenario, I know how to. The training ends with Private Robinson and his team airlifted back to safety, now equipped with the knowledge and experience they need to survive. Senior Airman Robert Mason, Camp Humphreys, Korea. Personnel recovery training makes sure soldiers are ready to make it out of a hostile situation. We head to the O'Malley Dining Facility to meet an airman whose family first mindset carries over into his daily routine. People think it's an easy job, but uh, once you really get into it and really know what services is, it's, uh, it's actually more complicated than you think. You know, we actually work as a family. We have a great community with the uh, Koreans here. Uh, my parents are from Laos, kind of remind me back home. So I, I like it here. There's a language barrier, but uh, they like to teach me a lot of Hangul and Korean, so it's not so hard for us to communicate. Can I cook? Uh, I could cook, and I can't cook. I usually do like the main meats for my family. Watching people enjoying the defects actually makes me happier. It, it kind of shows that we're doing our job right. And uh, once you start getting that conversation, seeing that same face, you know, you tend to make more friends. It actually brightens up our days, especially my days, because I like to help people a lot, so. It's difficult, you know, but we, we help each other a lot, so it, we make everything fun, you know. It's not always stress, stress, stress. Uh, the more fun we have, you know, the better we work and the better environment we, we tend to get. Airman First Class Moa's ethnicity is Hmong, a group from the mountainous region of China, Vietnam, Laos, and Thailand. Drugs, alcohol, and suicides are a serious topic in the military, but instead of the same old method of delivery, Petty Officer Justin Rouse introduces us to one man who shakes things up. <laughs> Let's get this out of the way quick. How many men and women have to be here? Round of applause. I'm just curious. Yeah. Captain, take me with you, man. <laughs> PowerPoint, one of the fastest ways to put anyone to sleep, has been a stable in military training. Comedian Bernie McGrenahan changes up the monotony of slides into stand-up comedy while still delivering the same powerful message. Captain said, if I do good in the movie theater today, I can perform tomorrow in the commissary. <laughs> um, I want to get away from that, do something different, unique, a little innovative, and bring entertainment to people, which I hope will open the door through laughter to some of my personal trials and tribulations with alcohol and alcohol abuse and inspire people to not make those same mistakes. Bernie has appeared in late night television comedy specials and even opened in Vegas for some of today's biggest stars. Now he reaches out to service members all around the world by visiting bases and bringing laughter. I got two minutes. How many of you are married, round of applause, or in a serious relationship? Clap, I'm just curious. Half you, where's the single people? Single people? What are the rest of you? Some of you didn't respond. You're like, it's complicated. My father served, my uncle served. I have not, but I love our military and I love the sacrifices made and I do not take my freedom for granted. And I've been all over the world thanks to the military to see missions up close. So I want to just bring some appreciation to them and some laughter and also tap into maybe some methods people are using to cope with stress while deployed. Using his personal experiences and comedic skills, the audience is able to focus and stay wide awake. Petty Officer Justin Rouse, Young Song, Korea. Come on, who's jumping in there, right? Poke your two legs through the holes, right? 
Bernie McGrinahan hopes to return in 2016. Visit ComedyIsTheCure.com to see his schedule. Every branch of service holds a high regard for physical fitness. Army Sergeant Kelly Weeby tells us of one person who helps Area 4 meet their fitness goals. Fitness enthusiasts gather at Camp Walker's Kelly Fitness Center for classes instructed by Erica Rosenberg. Some participants want to improve their PT score, some want to slim down, some just want to maintain an active lifestyle. Erica has lived an active lifestyle for quite a few years. I have been involved in fitness since high school. I started track and cross country when I was a freshman and carried that on through college. In college, I stuck with the same sports, track and cross country, up until my junior year, and then I transitioned into boxing. Started off boxing for fitness, and then my coach wanted me to get more competitive, so he offered me to step into the ring for sparring. Get more competitive, she has. She helps residents of Area 4 with the greatest boxing match they can face, the fight with themselves to keep in shape. As a trainer, Erica gets a great feeling of accomplishment for her students' sake. I like pushing people out of their comfort zones to try things that are new so it can not only strengthen them physically but empower them mentally. It inspires me when I see others pushing themselves to the point that they're just exhausted but they keep going and going. So it really does inspire me and that's what I love seeing here in the gym. Army Sergeant Kelly Weeby, Camp Walker, Korea. Erica Rosenberg conducts CrossFit classes free of charge at 11.30 every Monday, Tuesday, and Friday at Camp Walker's Kelly Fitness Center. Failing to properly dispose of and reuse equipment can create a negative impact on our military's mission readiness. Specialist Marquita Gibson observes one unit's turn-in and redistribution operation process. Continuously buying military equipment and supplies can waste a lot of time and money. If you want to properly dispose of your unwanted equipment, Task Force Harvest 3 can assist you. My main mission here at Task Force Harvest 3 is to get the list of inventories and send it up to 19th ESC and 501st Sustainment Brigade for redistribution. Instead of turning the items in by themselves, the units can simply put their uh, excess items into the, their own containers and send it to us so that we can do all the paperwork and turning process. Turning in equipment requires no paperwork from your unit, and shipping containers are provided to you if needed. Chief Warrant Officer 2 Rithner Nakasoni highly encourages units in Korea to consider other units' needs before throwing away operable equipment. This is the easiest turn-in process. Task Force Office 3 supports all eight Army units throughout areas 1, 2, 3, and 4, and we provide the transportation from the unit's location all the way down here to Camp Carroll. Soldiers working in Task Force Harvest 3, like Private First Class Cha, strive to uphold the We Are Flexible motto by being more than willing to serve units in need. Units occasionally request simple items such as binders and cable assemblies, you know, and you can imagine all the other major appliances that are needed. That's why I love my job. It's like a treasure trove. The amount of excess and old equipment I see being turned in I know that this really helps out the units a lot. Specialist Marquita Gibson, Camp Carroll, Korea. Task Force Harvest 3 is collecting excess supplies and equipment around the peninsula until April 15th of this year. That was your Around the Peninsula for Thursday, February 5th. To see these stories and others, go to the AFN Pacific website or view them through the AFN Pacific app. From all of us at AFN, enjoy your evening. Yellow dust. Be prepared.